just want to do is code and cleanse your data. We just did that. Uh, I always like to do that over in Excel. Uh, there's, there's, there's probably easier ways in R, uh, but I just uh, don't, uh, I don't do that. Uh, number three, uh, remember question number three had to be recoded, so <clears throat> we've already taken care of that, so, so cool. Now, the next thing we'd want to do is look at a correlation matrix, and we should know how to do that. The problem is, think this through. <laughs> uh, we have a very, very, very large matrix here. Uh, now, granted, the only thing you need to look at is the upper triangle, the upper triangle or the lower triangle, and I'll show you a way to get that uh, in just a second. Nevertheless, just by observation, this could be completely and totally overwhelming trying to go through here and, and determine what proportion or what percentage of the correlations are low. Um, I like, uh, again, I, I pointed this out uh, earlier, I like to, uh, to round these things to three places. It just cleans it up a little bit. Uh, and uh, yeah, plus it... Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to read because we get our correlation matrix on, on, on two lines. So, But uh, anyway, I think you, you drive yourself absolutely crazy if you try to examine these things and um, make a determination whether you have too many uh, low correlations. So uh, guys, remember we did the uh, Bartlett's test, but the uh, first thing we have to do with Bartlett's test is... Uh, uh, access the library for Psych. I've already installed the packages, so uh, uh, you probably have too, or at least I hope you have. So I do core test uh, Bartlett uh, with my data. Remember uh, p values above 0.05. Uh, what do you mean r was not square? Uh, how is r not square? Oh, my bad, guys. Uh, well, uh, let me back up a little bit. I need to use core test uh, bar, uh, Bartlett uh, with the correlation of our data. Okay, let me see something here. Uh, core test. Um, no, I don't, guys. I'm confusing myself. This is the one we need to record. Uh, but uh, the core test, uh, yeah, 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 this is it. Forget this stuff down here. I, I lost my mind uh, temporarily there. So, uh, we, we, you know, problems uh, would be p-values above 0.05, so we have a p-value that's rounded to zero, so uh, everything's good there. Uh, where I'm getting confused is the determinant of uh, the correlation um, and remember, this needs to be greater than 0.0001. Uh, I think I only said three ones, but I should have said four ones. And uh, 0.0005 is clearly higher. So uh, we have no problems with too many high or low correlations. So uh, life is uh, really, really good. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go for it. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to run my uh, uh, first... Uh, uh, principal component analysis, and I want my n factors uh, to be uh, the number of variables, which are 23. <clears throat> and the first time, I want to uh, get the boring factor loadings or the PCA loadings, uh, and do uh, and do none. What's going on here? Oh shoot! You guys ever just sit there and like scream at me like, "Dar bro, what are you doing?" All right, so we look at PCA1, and it's going to be good to go back over this. Uh, remember, these, uh, these are your, uh, uh, your PCA loadings, and before any rotation, they're not at all uh, interesting to us. Uh, remember, these are your commonalities. These, is, these are your uniqueness factors. All these are zero. Uh, you know, this is negative 2.2 uh, times 10 to the negative 16. But what is of extreme importance to us are the... Uh, the, the eigen uh, vectors, I'm sorry, the eigen values. And they are uh, housed under SS loadings. So uh, I'm looking at this and I'm uh, kind of old school on this. There's a lot of new stuff out there that's kind of taken over the market. Uh, but I'm kind of a firm believer that uh, unless my scree plot shows otherwise, 
I retain the components that have eigenvalues above 1. Now, I've got something going on here. That 0.99 for that fifth component is something that's interesting to me, and I'm probably going to want to examine that if there's any, uh, uh, anything going on with my um, uh, scree plot that doesn't give me a, a clear indication of the number of components. Uh, this fit based off the diagonal values. This is really interesting to us once we perform the rotation. <clears throat> but as it stands right now, that's, uh, that's, that's not interesting at all. So uh, I don't know. It, uh, it kind of looks like to me that <clears throat> I'm leaning between four and five factors. So uh, I'm going to do my plot, my scree plot. And I want to do uh, one uh, dollar, and I uh, what do I use there? Uh, load, load, no, 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 values, yeah. Equals B, okay? Now, I get my plot here, and I'm trying to just really determine uh, where the point of inflection is. So, um, you know, I come down here. The first uh, factor is uh, is is really overwhelming. By you can tell the kind of the verticalness of that bar and how long it is, uh, and, and you can see that uh, the reason that has such length is because my first eigenvalue is uh, is about uh, five times higher than my uh, next uh, next one. So, you know, I've still got vertical. Uh, that's kind of throwing me off a little bit. So. But then I come down, and then this, this horizontal component, clearly I'm thinking horizontal, 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 horizontal. And right here uh, is where it starts to take a vertical move. So I'm looking at a 1, 2, 3, 4 component model here. And again, there may be an argument for that fifth one, but I think this is more of the horizontal uh, inflection than it is the vertical. So gang... Uh, I'm feeling uh, more and more cool about uh, a four-factor model. All right, so uh, that's uh, what uh, what we want to do. So uh, let's 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 run that again. So I'm going to call my next uh, uh, PCA two, and um, um, Okay, got some stuff going on outside. One of the bad things about teaching at home is there's so daggone much stuff uh, going on. Actually, my next door neighbor just passed away. Passed away um, uh, Saturday, so there's uh, some. Her family's uh, been uh, in and out. Uh, she was, uh, I think she was 88. She was a she's a cool neighbor, so we're gonna miss her. Uh, okay, uh, gang, you can't do a rotation until we uh, uh, install the library or access the library for uh, GPA rotation. Uh, I've already installed that, so you may need to as well. And uh, now we get PCA2, and uh, let's see what happens. Now, gang, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the PCA loadings now, uh, start to take on uh, some some meaning. So it looks like question uh, number one has uh, loaded uh, on uh, component one. It looks like question two has loaded on component two. It looks like question three has loaded on component one and so on and so forth. Uh, the H2 uh, when I come down, let's just pick one and talk about it. This point seventy four. Uh, this tells me that question eight uh, is highly dependent on other questions here. So seventy four percent of the variance in question eight is shared with other uh, 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 questions. Only twenty six percent of the variance in question eight uh, is uh, is unique. So again, the way you get that is just subtract. Uh, your commonality uh, from one to get your uniqueness. So I don't know that that's that's stuff that uh, you can run around and talk about and make, make people think that you're really smart. Uh, again, my uh, what I like down here is the cumulative variance uh, with these uh, components. We're uh, looking at uh, 
about 50%. Let me go back up and, and look at what it would have been if we retained the fifth one. So it went up to 55%. Um, I tell you, I'm sticking with the scree plot. I'm going to go, uh, I'm, I'm feeling kind of kind of jiggy, whatever jiggy is. I don't know. That's the first time in my life I've ever used that word. I'm feeling pretty jiggy of the, uh, of the uh, four-factor model. So, uh, Guys, next thing I'd want to do is I'd examine the residuals. So let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, so I'm just going to store these uh, very creatively as residuals because I'm clever that way. Guys, I got to tell you, I'm in a great mood today. Got Kentucky coming on. I know they'll be in such a great mood, though, if, um, uh, if they lose. Oh, shoot, what I put there? Uh, uh, loading sim. And, uh, you know, if this kind of stuff turns you on, you can, uh, you can look at your residuals. Uh, I think they you know, absolutely drive you insane because there's so much going on. <clears throat> uh, and, again, what, uh, you know, if I ask you in a test question, what's that .56 tell you? Uh, that's just the difference between the residual uh, from our original data retaining all the components uh, to the, um, uh, the residuals uh, retaining uh, four components. So that's a little high. That's actually uh, uh, a little problematic to me. But uh, really, though, what we're going to do, we're going to be more worried about the upper triangle than we are uh, actually the, the values on the diagonal. Not as much how the correlation changed with itself because, you know, that, that, that uh, started out uh, a perfect one. So, uh, so uh, guys, uh, I want to put these as a matrix because I want to do some stuff with them. Uh, so I'm going to uh, restore the residuals uh, as matrix. And I want uh, my residuals. Uh, now I want to come in with uh, and just get the upper triangle. I think that's the way that... Um, let's see, that'll be a miracle if this works. Uh, upper... Um, I may have to stop and go look at that, look that up. No, oh, wow, cool. Uh, now, I want to identify my large residuals. And guys, the way we uh, identify large residuals is, uh, and, and again, think of, let me, let me back up a little bit. Why do we do the upper triangle? Well, what that'll do, it'll give me everything above the diagonal, because if you think about it, everything below the diagonal, it's just uh, symmetric with everything above the diagonal, so... Uh, so I just need to look at, uh, at those. And what I ultimately want to do is I want to add these things up and, and look at some means and look at histograms. And I don't want my residuals counted twice. So I just want to focus on the upper triangle uh, of the matrix so I can just count the residuals one time when I get some of this descriptive statistics stuff. So uh, uh, what I'd like to do, I don't really care about sign, you know, a 0.95 correlation and a negative 0.95 correlation. Uh, extremely high, so I'm not really uh, into that. And uh, it turns out that the threshold on these things is 0.05. So absolute residuals that are higher than 0.05 uh, uh, can rise concern. Now we're, uh, we're just naturally going to have some of those, and I can go through here and eyeball, like there's one, and there's one, and uh, there's one. But how many do we have? So we can store the number uh, in as the large residuals, or not the number, but we can store all those uh, in as large residuals. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to find the percentage of re our total residuals that are large residuals. So uh, I might just call this uh, percent, because again, I'm creative that way. And what I'd like to do is get the sum of my large residuals. So how many are there uh, divided by uh, the total residuals? And I can do that uh, this way. Uh, what did I? Oh, okay, I see what I did. I can't uh, didn't spell correctly. You know, as much as I deal with uh, R, it still kind of blows my mind sometimes when I get those errors. So guys, what we get there is we get a percentage of our large residuals is uh, 36%, uh, 34 point, 35.97%. But uh, th the threshold here is 50%. You don't want 50% or more of your residuals uh, to, uh, to be higher than 0.05. Now, 
uh, you know, p tattoo this one to the brain. What happens if this, what if we'd run this and it turned out to be 60%? Then what you would probably want to do uh, is you would want to uh, uh, retain more factors. So that would be a situation where I would want to go back up, rerun my principal component analysis with five factors, and redo everything and see uh, what it takes to get this percentage below 50%. So, um, gang, what I can now do uh, is I can uh, look at a picture of my residuals. And you can see down here that 0.05, again, is kind of the threshold. You can see that most of them are below uh, 0.05. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to copy and paste this into the to the write-up, uh, uh, so you'll um, you'll you'll get that. Uh, next thing we'd want to look at is we'd look want to look at the uh, the mean of the residuals, and another uh, threshold uh, for for problems uh, would be if the mean of the residuals was above 0.08. Now we don't actually find the mean of the residuals. What we find is called the root mean square uh, residuals. So this is uh, equivalent to uh, the mean of the residuals, okay? Because you got a bunch of residuals that are negative and a bunch that are positive, so uh, we need to, uh, to, to address that. So uh, the, the, the way I would do this is to find the mean, I would just do the square root uh, of the mean of the residuals squared, just as it says. Uh, so our mean of the residuals here is 0.056, or I'm sorry, 0.055, uh, which is below the threshold uh, uh, of 0.08, uh, so life is good. No, oh, wow, okay, I, I didn't even type that, it just popped up. Okay, uh, so gang, I'm, uh, I'm I'm feeling really really good about this uh, this 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 uh, uh, decision to go with uh, four components. So I'm kind of ready to, to 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 make things happen uh, uh, with uh, with the uh, 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 you know reporting this, and, and if I wanted to to do something with the factor scores, uh, I would feel very comfortable doing that. Now let's review. Uh, all right, I feel good about four factors uh, 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 for four reasons. Uh, well, that was cool that the number of factors turned out the reason I feel good about it. But uh, number one, uh, I'm, I'm uh, happy with... Uh, Uh, greater than one and the scree plot. Uh, these both agreed, so uh, I'm I'm cool with that. Uh, the second thing uh, uh, we have uh, uh, 15 uh, uh, times uh, 23 uh, is greater than. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, our uh, number of cases. So 20, I uh, forget how many cases we had. Um, uh, our, well, let's just say our number of cases, uh, individuals, is greater than uh, 15 times 23. So 15 is the just the, the, the multiplier, the constant. Uh, so I'm happy with the sample size. Uh, the third thing, uh, we checked our residuals. <clears throat> and... Uh, uh, found out a couple things. Uh, histogram was bell shaped and appears uh, it came from a normal distribution. Our mean was uh, uh, below uh, 0 0.08 and uh, less than 50% of our residuals. Uh, emerged uh, less than 0.05, okay? 
So I'm feeling good about this stuff. And finally, uh, the fourth reason I'm feeling good about the, uh, the four-factor model is uh, our, model, uh, our model fit from the output uh, is greater than 0.90. Uh, guys, I don't think I really uh, focused on that, so let's go back up here. Uh, the fit based on the, uh, off the diagonal values, uh, 0.96. So uh, I like for this to be above 0.95, but uh, it's, it's, it's essential that that's above 0.90. If it's not above 0.90, then uh, you would need to uh, go back and, and strongly consider uh, pulling out more factors and, and going with it. Okay.